Ultraviolet is a secondary disinfection system. What that means is that it's not used on its own. So it's secondary to a primary disinfection system, usually chlorine. So you wouldn't be able to just use uh, ultraviolet without using a primary disinfection system. So it's chlorine plus ultraviolet system rather than ultraviolet being instead of uh, chlorine. Ultraviolet light exists on the electromagnetic spectrum between visible light and x-rays. So you've got radio waves over here and then radar, infrared, visible light, UV rays and then x-rays and gamma rays at the other end of the spectrum. And within the UV area, the ultraviolet light area, at a certain wavelength of 254 nanometers, ultraviolet light is very effective as a disinfectant. And it's been proven to be effective even against Cryptosporidia and Gaiardia, which chlorine isn't effective against. So on a pool plant system, it's installed after filtration so what you've got here is obviously the pool itself water being delivered from the pool through the strainers circulation pumps through the filtration system and there's where the appropriate place is for uv so the the better systems will actually put a hundred percent of the flow through the uv chamber and then it goes through the heat exchanger and chemical dosing and then returns back to the pool. This is an example of a system. So here you've got filtered water going through the UV chamber and then back to the pool. And on the inside of that, you've got a, a UV lamp that's emitting UV light and the filtered pool water gets exposed to that UV light as it passes through the UV chamber. And there will usually be a, a control panel to tell you what the, uh, the dose rate is and also the intensity, flow rate, and also how many hours the UV lamp has been operating for, how many hours it's got left, and whether or not there's a fault uh, with any of the, the UV lamps. Ultraviolet disinfection is referred to as a non-residual disinfectant, which is unlike chlorine, which is a residual disinfectant. What that means is that with chlorine, when it's injected, so on the schematic, you've got chlorine here and it's being injected there and then the water goes back, circulates back to the pool. So you've got chlorine all dissolved in this water. So there's always a residual of chlorine there. And as the water exits the pool and circulates around the system, there's still chlorine in the water all the way along here. Through the filtration system, there's still chlorine. And then when it goes through the UV, the UV will reduce somewhat the level of chlorine in the in the water but all around the system there is chlorine so a good way to think of it is that the, the chlorine sort of resides in the water which is different from uv which is non-residual so there's not a residual of uv in any of this um, there's only uv in that small part of the system so it's only effective at the point of contact, the point of contact between the water and the UV light. As soon as the water comes out of the UV chamber and circulates back to the pool, there's no UV residual in that water. So it's different from chlorine in that respect. So that's why you can't have just UV. That's why it's referred to as a secondary disinfection system, because there's no, you, if you didn't have chlorine in this water, 
in the pool, then there's no disinfectant at all in that water, in that pool of water. You're, you're, you're having to wait until it goes through all of this and through the UV for it to get any sort of disinfectant treatment. So it wouldn't be appropriate to just have UV in isolation. There needs to be a residual disinfectant at all times. So chlorine is still the primary disinfectant, the main one, and UV is a useful secondary supplemental system to it. Uh, the good thing about UV is that, as I mentioned earlier, it is effective against Cryptosporidia and Gaiardia. It's very effective at breaking down bacteria, oxidizing it and killing it. And it also helps to break down combined chlorines, monochloramine, dichloramine and trichloramine. It will break those down. So it does provide a more pleasant experience for the bather because you don't have to use as much chlorine. A UV system will make it more realistic that you will be able to reduce the chlorine level down to a minimum of 0.5. To achieve the same type of disinfection without UV, you might have needed to have used uh, 1 to 1.5 uh, milligrams per litre of chlorine but with UV you could potentially drop down to 0 0.5 milligrams per litre. Of course you would need to verify that you're still achieving good disinfection via your microbiological reports. A couple of things to note about the UV system itself is that the, the tubes, the lamps, uh, typically will last at around about 8,000 hours, 8,000 to 10,000 hours, somewhere in that range. So about a year. So the lamps need to be replaced on a yearly basis. Therefore, it will require, in most cases, a maintenance contract. So there's ongoing costs to it. But an advantage is, is you'll potentially be able to offset those costs with the reduction in the amount of chemicals that you would have to you would have to use 